Well, uh, we're uh, at the Martin Arboretum with Dr. Jerry Wilhelm, and we had just done another video on floristic quality indexes, but Jerry also works w with lichens, and he's published earlier comparisons of lichens in 1996 to earlier Chicagoland publications on lichens from the late 1800s and he's uh, again working on the lichen flora of the region and, and and this might be a good time to ask just some basic questions ones that we get that um, we don't have like a good technical answer for uh, we get questions like why don't we use mosses why don't we use fungi and we've answered some of those but we've never really answered for the occasional question why don't we use lichens in wetlands and I'd like to see if you could uh, explain to us maybe what a lichen is and why we might not use lichens for wetland delineation purposes? Well, lichens are essentially fungi, and so uh, they are not common in, in wetlands for the simple reason, but it's similar to the way uh, fungi are not. But lichens uh, do grow uh, every, can grow pretty much anywhere where there isn't flood water, or where there, where there isn't, uh, where, the, where the water levels aren't rising and flooding them out. There's one lichen that does grow on the Ohio River, Pelopisia vein, it's federally endangered, and it does grow uh, right under the high water mark of the, where the Ohio River floods on a regular oh. basis in spring. So there's Pelopisia leana just below that water mark. Above that is all the other lichens that grow on trees there. And so it's one of the few lichens that grow underwater. There's one lichen that grows underwater here. It grows in fens. It's a Verucaria, a little crustless lichen that no one would notice. Uh, Verucaria heliomelina, I think its name is. A uh, very rare. I've only found it once on a huh. little piece of gravel in a fen. Uh, but mostly the lichens, uh, and it doesn't have much of a thallus, to be quite honest. Uh, so lichens, I don't know if I mentioned it, but lichens are fungi, and about of all the fungi in the world, 40% are lichenized. That is to say, they have a uh, relationship, and, and uh, I, I should have the ascomycetes. About 40% of all the ascomycetes, those that produce an ascoma, uh, and are, are lichenized. And they grow on trees, they grow on soil, they grow on rocks, they grow on old, well loud leech shoe leather and iron. <laughs> and so they grow on just about anywhere but a little wetland. So if you see a lichen, there's a strong chance you're not in a wetland. Okay. That's so one it's a good upland it. indicator. You're an upland indicator, yeah. Right. So, uh, but I, I, I haven't looked into the physiology of how that the photobiont and the fungal. Uh, stratification of, of a lichen thallus would would work if it was constantly inundated. I suspect what you'd run into is a it doesn't really have would have a mechanism for maintaining oxygen well within the fungal thallus. Oh, okay. Whereas uh, right. an algal cell can, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but whether there's a transport system to get that oxygen into the fungal hyphae uh, the way it does carbon, I don't know. That might have something to do with right. it. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, the, um, it's a question we get occasionally as people search around for different ways to find the outer boundaries, quote unquote, of a wetland. Mm -hmm. um, and lichens has come up, and they see them, you'll see them in Alaska on tops of hummocks. Mm -hmm. But that's a top of a right. hummock that's really right. not in the water. Mm -hmm. It may get moisture up into the hummock through saturation, mm -hmm. but it's really uh, tops of the hummocks are not wetlands. Yeah, right. <laughs> Even though they're out in the wetland. All, all of it's in the wetland. Yes. Would you delineate around it? <laughs> no, they take it all. <laughs> so those are wetland lichens. Right, right. If they're special, if they're, if, well, I guess you could say if they were conservative to those hummocks. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that I don't know if anybody knows. Yeah. 
uh, mm -hmm. or is even looked at. Lichens do. Doug Latt and I did a test in Missouri on the sea values for lichens, and they oh, really? pretty much match up with the vascular plants wherever you are. Oh, is that right? So you have the weedy lichens, you mm -hmm. know, and you have the somewhat conservative lichens and the very conservative lichens. Oh. For example, there's a, I think it's Spherospora americana that we are out in uh, Stone County or somewhere out in southwest Missouri, and it only grew on old growth juniper branches that were hanging out over this great it's, uh, palisade. There were other, right in a, in a fenced off pasture next door, there were other, some other junipers just as old that just had weedy lichens on it. Oh. So something about hanging on over that, uh, on that old growth juniper that uh, allowed a very conservative lichen to be there. And I, uh, there were there were some steps that were carved at Kanky River State Park out of the out of the sand uh, limestone, and on the faces and other little uh, breaks on the limestone, there were conservative lichens would have high Z values, but on the treads and risers where it had been carved out over 100 years ago, it was still weedy lichens. Mm -hmm. So it's, even after 100 years, it hadn't become bleached enough or something enough to attract the uh, conservative lichens, which are right there. So that just that cutting of the of the limestone was a severe severe disturbance yeah, to right, the community. Right, right, interesting. And so uh, lichens are have the same the if you take that same idea, how confident are you in your remnant when you see it? Right. You can you could apply the same theory uh, to lichens. Yeah. And actually, Laura, my co-author with that book, has done it with plants. I mean, with ants. And so that we, whenever we would collect an ant, we'd take the C value of, right. the, of the plants around it and discover that when we do the ants of an area, we give them C values, it, we did a test case, and where the ants, the, the C, mean C of the ants was the same you get for the mean C of the plants for huh. a meadow or a pasture or whatever. Well, interesting, yeah, well it's a good must, you know, to me things like that say, well then it's a good basic concept that works across several. Yeah situations or variables and in this case species. It, it would work for car you know shortly after I came out with the uh, ballistic quality index car came out with a, a index of biotic integrity with a fish yes. I think around 1979 or so mm -hmm. and he didn't go as far as I did but I know having worked with fish in northern Florida for example that uh, a lot of the uh, percentages and ethiostomas and, and uh, 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 that kind of those, those a lot of those would be and some other lampreys would be uh, very other, other kind of fish could be tens and eights and nines so you could do the same thing with right. those fish right. go well beyond what Carr did and uh, give them sea values and it would work beautifully because a lot of the particularly in the south well, even up here the uh, drainages you know some, they have a lot of endemics and very conservative species in those Aboriginal drainages. And uh, in fact, uh, Chris Anker, Laura's husband, did a study up here in the Des Plaines River where they pulled out a dam. And while we don't have sea values for the fish there, the fish population after a few years just really jumped up. And he said they're getting pretty interesting fish too. So you can show that just taking out that dam after a number of years, they were getting probably higher sea values and higher diversity for fish. Oh, if we oh. just had that, we could do it still and go back and right and, and and look at the old documents and compare but so it's a it's a it's basically the question is the same when you see this organism whatever it is a lichen a moss like scorpidium and a fin mm -hmm. uh, you can how confident are you you're a remnant right and how confident you are in a high quality remnant or how confident are you you're in a, in a rural area and so like of the 450 bee species that, that, that Laura has for the region, only about 30 will come to a bee garden. Because, and they're the generalists, uh, they're not usually oligolex, they're usually the generalist bee species. So not even 10% of the bee species will grow in a bee garden. So people who are, who are telling people, well, if you just plant native plants, you get native insects, it's just not true. You have to have a native, ha you have to have a remnant area to get those bees. Any more than if you were to plant, say, a white prairie clover, and then somehow white, a, a purple one's going to come up next to it? That's unreasonable. You know, so just to think that just because you plant a prairie flower, you're going to get a prairie insect is unreasonable. Yeah, yeah. But people who don't look at actually what's actually happening with the bee species can't see that. So they just see a bunch of bees, little hydrinas and 
and uh, Bombuses and and, and and Colides and whatnot, all the whole Osmia, the whole thing. If you don't know the species, you can't tell. You you might think you're getting a lot of bees. Mm -hmm. So this is another reason why we need organismal biologists to help us understand are we really interacting with the world in a good way or are we just fooling ourselves? You can't tell unless you have a, 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 a well-trained cadre of people in organismal yeah. biology. Yeah. Well, I very much agree. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, okay, well, with that, I <laughs> think we'll Again, I'll thank you, um, and because this video, I think you answered our question about using lichens in wetlands. If you find one, it's probably an upland. <laughs> so, um, so uh, again, thank you very much for your time. You've been very generous, very informative, thank and you. You're very unique insights into uh, what I would say common observations that are not common and more complex than meets the eye. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Pleasure, Bob. All right. Yeah.